Welcome to another episode of Film Fetish. As usual, I'm your host CJ, and to keep with Action Movie March, today we're going to talk about my favorite final battles in action movies. You know what scene I mean. It's the big showdown between the hero and either the big bad or his particularly resilient henchman. And the one thing I love in a movie is the moment where the villain finally bites it. Unfortunately, too often the villain in these movies, or any movie featuring a villain really, have a tendency to just kind of go out like a sissy. There's not a fight scene or anything, really. They're just like, bam, bam, they're done. That's not acceptable. Today we're going to get dramatic and brutal, so let's begin. Quick reminder, as usual with my lists, every film I talk about today is also a recommendation, so enjoy. First up, we have the Kurt Russell sci-fi action film Soldier. The film was directed by Resident Evil series writer and director Paul W.S. Anderson, and while it's a little dated by today's standards, the film is an overlooked gem in the action genre, featuring enhanced soldiers, brutal melee fights, a ridiculous amount of fire bursts, and an amazing climax. This film needs way more attention than it gets. Now the villain death and final battle in question is the fight between Kurt Russell and the modified badass played by Jason Scott Lee. Let me set the scene for you. It's storming, and the area is covered in twisted debris. Fire juts out of random intervals. Kurt Russell has just single-handedly wiped out an entire assault force, and the wounded remaining henchman Kane, not willing to give up. Kane injects himself with steroids and silently challenges Russell to a fist fight. What ensues is a brutal melee in a pit full of muddy water and destroyed aircrafts. The fight comes to a head when a severely beaten Russell distracts Kane long enough to slice open his stomach with a helicopter blade, and then proceeds to beat the living dog shit out of his rival, ending the fight with a dramatic neck snap. The whole scene is great, and the final snap is the icing on the cake. If you're up for some good old-fashioned action, check it out. Next up we have John Woo's first American film, Hard Target, starring Jean-Claude Van Damme and Lance Henriksen. The film is a bullet hell action movie full of guns akimbo shootouts, so much slow-mo and mullet wearing Jean-Claude chewing the scenery. This is definitely one of my all-time favorites. Now the climax of the film is Jean-Claude Van Damme's chance, being cornered in a large warehouse by Henriksen's Faustin and a group of mercenaries he's hired. What follows is each man getting picked off until it's down to Chance versus Faustin. After surviving a shotgun blast to the shoulder, Faustin takes up a flaming 2x4 and beats Chance until he's had enough of his shit and grabs the board, holding it in place as the villain struggles. Chance snaps the board in two, kicks the living shit out of Faustin with several roundhouse kicks, then, while holding a hand grenade, proceeds to bash Faustin in the face before dropping the live grenade down his pants. Then he headbutts him into a pile of garbage. Faustin tries to pull out the grenade, finally managing to, before twisting off the detonator. Unfortunately for him, there's still a spark that detonates the grenade, killing our villain in an over-the-top explosion. Onward we go to another overlooked action extravaganza, 3,000 Miles to Graceland, starring Kurt Russell and Kevin Costner. The film is about a team of bank robbers who dress up as Elvis impersonators to rob a casino. The job is a success, but a greedy and paranoid Costner murders his team and takes the money for himself. Unfortunately for him, Russell survives and plots his revenge. The end of the film sees Russell distracting Costner and his two henchmen long enough for the police to show up before a massive shootout takes place. We have former football player Howie Long getting killed protecting Costner and a random Ice-T appearance where he dual wields machine guns while hanging upside down on a cable. After Ice-T's demise, a wounded Costner holds up inside a small office, surrounded by a crap ton of red lasers. What does he do? He reloads his M60 machine gun and opens fire on the police, who in turn annihilate the villain in a hail of bullets. The buildup to his death really sells the scene, and his bullet-riddled body shown afterwards only solidifies how brutal it was. The film as a whole is a very over-the-top and is pretty ridiculous. Costner is the standout character as the main villain, and his character's demise is simply the icing on the cake. Next up is an action movie that is the definition of excessive, but in a good way. The movie in question is the 2010 Indonesian martial arts film The Raid Redemption, starring martial arts turned actor Iku Uwais and Yuyan Rubian. The story follows a SWAT unit as they attempt to clear out a massive 15-story high-rise tower ran by a ruthless warlord and his two henchmen. What the movie lacks in plot, it quickly makes up in action, with the movie having almost non-stop incredibly choreographed fight scenes and shootouts. 
This brings us to our villain death and final battle. Near the end of the film, Eco finds his brother held hostage and currently being beaten by the main dude's right hand man and general badass, Mad Dog. He then willingly frees Eco's brother and decides to fight them 2 on 1. What follows is Mad Dog dominating the lengthy fight, pummeling the two brothers at every turn, until finally some quick thinking sees Mad Dog impelled in the throat with a piece of fluorescent bulb. This only pisses him off and he fights even harder, but sloppier, leading to both of his arms being broken and his throat slowly being sliced open by the bulb protruding from his neck. The entire scene is roughly five to six minutes long, and by the end, all three men are beaten down and exhausted, and you, the viewer, with them. It's an incredibly visceral and brutal scene to cap off another amazing action film. Last up is my favorite action star, Dolph Lundgren, in one of his most excellent B-action roles. We have Showdown in Little Tokyo. The film also stars the late Brandon Lee and Kerry Tagawa, and features so much cheese, it's a sight to behold. The action scenes are ridiculous, the dialogue is hilarious and sometimes bizarre, and that story is pretty hilarious. I personally love this film and hope it gains more of a cult following one day. For now, however, let's talk about the final battle. In this scene, we have the hulking Dolph, wielding a katana, versus Kari Tagawa as a heavily tattooed Yakuza boss, also wielding a katana. They engage in a poorly choreographed sword fight where Dolph takes many, many slashes, but somehow doesn't seem to slow. Then, as with most action films, Dolph turns the tables and starts hacking away at Tagawa, eventually running him through before tossing him onto a spinning board that launches fireworks. The scene is hilarious as Tagawa's character screams in agony as the board begins to slowly spin and shoot sparkles before somehow exploding, engulfing the villain in flames. The scene isn't very long, but it is one hell of a way to end a loud, fun, and odd 90s action film. So that was my list of favorite final battles and action movies. Any you think I missed? Any lists you'd like to see me make? Please leave those in the comments below. As usual, if you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe for future content. This has been Film Fetish, I'm your host CJ, and as always, keep it low brow.